just because I don't like getting super frustrated in video games either. And I get super frustrated with enough of them as it is. Um, okay. Well, we are continuing our playthrough of the first Banner Saga. Um, if you forgot what happened last time, <clears throat> uh, we... So, okay, the time before that, we ended with the Varl capital of Grofheim being engulfed in flames and the Varl human caravan from from Strand uh, essentially having to change course. Um, then we went back to Rook and Alette here and Ivor um, who were outside the gates of Frostfeller and uh, have after having made multiple attempts to, to get in uh, and actually losing two characters in the process, uh, we decided to cut our losses and start heading towards the Varl settlement of Wormtow. Um, we got to Wormtow, and the Varl in charge, Krumir, recognized Ivar, calling him by the name of Ingvar. Um, we don't know what Ingvar means yet. Uh, or what or who Ivar really is. I mean, I know. I've played this, but you all don't know. Um, <clears throat> and we were on our way to Grofheim with Rook, Alet, Ivar, and the Varl from Wormto. However, we, we met up with Fasolt, who was one of the Varl from Hakon and Luden and Uben's caravan, the ones who went to Grofheim and found it burning. Uh, Fasolt was actually dispatched by Hakon to to get the Varl from Wormto and get them to Einertoft, uh, which is another Varl stronghold. And so we started making our way towards Einertoft. <clears throat> However, as we got close, we find out that humans aren't allowed in Einertoft. However, Ivar says he won't be going, he won't enter the city unless they're welcome. Well, um... I think they agreed that, that we could get into the city. Um, but the, the conversation was cut sor short because of a massive earthquake that uh, it's essentially shook mountains to the core. And in the background, if you remember, if you remember, there was a, a serpent kind of dancing around back there. Um, we crossed the Great Bridge, that, that one that Rook said only Varl could make, and entered the... Uh, sheltered city of Einartoft, and that's kind of where we left it. Uh, we didn't do any exploring yet. We just kind of, we got there. The caravan is safe. We essentially combined the two caravans now because we know that Hakon, Luden, Ubin, uh, and those guys are in Einartoft as well. Uh, if you remember correctly as well, we went to, um, gosh, I forgot the name of the fortress, I do remember the giant serpent that you seem to not react to. <laughs> the first time I saw it, man, I was flipping my shit. Um, yeah, it's it, it was it was pretty cool. But yeah, I, I mean, I've played this on virtually every platform it's released on at this point. So um, though we have actually made some decisions that I've never seen uh, before. So uh, like Gunulf. The uh, Varl in the green clothes who tried to save the uh, who tried to save the cart that was full of treasure that went overboard er, like a couple videos ago, um, he's always died at that point for me. Like I've always made the wrong decision and he's died. You guys chose uh, the the right decision to keep him alive, though it did cost us a ton of gold and supplies. Um, there's a couple other ones that I don't want to spoil just in case you guys want to play by yourself. But I mean, I, th I've played through this multiple times, but there are still things that are new to me. Um, but I mean, going back to, uh, I think, two videos ago, um, we also went to a Varl stronghold. We saw a bunch of dredge leaving and when we went up to the top of the stronghold. We saw two bodies, uh, one of them dead, one of them alive. We grabbed the alive one and fought our way out of there. Turns out um, that his name is Ivind. He's a mender. Um, and he actually wanted us to go back uh, for the person who was who was left there. But Hakon 
said no. Okay, so now that we're all sufficiently caught up, I was also kind of buying time in case anybody else wanted to join, but uh, they'll join in progress, I guess. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and resume the game and, and pick up an Einertoft. So yeah, all of the Varl here. Um, ooh, sweet. Market. See, I think these guys think I should be a higher level than I am, but I'm I'm really not. Oh shoot. I have like no renown left. Okay, looks like we're still kind of playing with the uh with the rook party here. Um I like I'm gonna keep this lineup. I Yeah. Well, actually I'm gonna I'm gonna put Orleif back in. Just because I want that extra range for right now. Yeah. <laughs> We spent all of the renown on food, which then got burnt, uh, and we lost like 15 days worth of food. Einar Toft, the home of the first Varl king, Einar, who carved his empire into the crook of the Breta Breck and Wormscale Mountains. The Varl fortress, hewn into the rock itself, eclipses all but the greater accomplishments in the north. Uh, there's like so much of this map that we actually haven't seen yet, you guys. Crown. Rundwal. Valka Yokul. I love how everything is so Icelandic, Norse. Stromlund. Other home. Boer's guard. Ormsdaler. Sigurholm. Okay. I'm gonna stop just saying random words. Okay. Uh, I think we're gonna rest. <clears throat> As you settle in, you receive word to come to the Great Hall the next morning. Ivor suggests not speaking unless addressed. And even then, keep it short. In your dreams that night, you see Varl kings fighting with dredge lords. An ominous feeling lingers as you prepare to enter the Great Hall. Enough, Ivan. The bridge stands. Find some other way. Greetings from Wormto, Jorindur. I've brought an ally. Who are these people? We don't have time for games, says Luden, not understanding the situation. Wait, I know you. Ingvar among us again? Is this what the end of the world looks like? Jorinder steps down from his throne to get a closer look. In the light, you spy deep wounds on the Varl King. It was my last option. You look like death, Jorundur, says Ivor. The Sundur came through Grafheim, all of them, or we would still be there. Hakon says, a few thousand Varl remain. Bellower has been following us since Grafheim. Ivor says, that's what he does. What will you do? Remain, says Jorundur. There's no better place for us than here. We will make our stand in Einartoft. But even if Einartoft falls, the Varl won't be wiped out. Hakon is taking our best warriors to Arbereng, as we were discussing. I'm not going, Jorindur, says Hakon. We're needed here. This is not a debate. A messenger bursts through the doors, cutting the tension. 
He says a stone singer has been cutting a path across the bridge. Jorinder says, Gods, can we not have a moment's respite? They should know not they should not be here already. Ivan says, A stone singer is with them. Let me bring down the bridge as I said. It will buy us. I said the bridge stands, Mender. Jorinder says. I say it again to you, and the Prince of Men, and the whole Mender Council, were they here. I will not say it again. Hakon, you go to Abering. Ivan, do not even touch that bridge. Am I understood? You are. Then I'll confront the singer myself, Ivan says. Nobody tries to stop Ivan, but many follow as he leaves the Great Hall. The mender walks past great companies of Varl on the way out, on the way to the bridge. A tall, thin creature stands there, two black spears over its shoulder, ringed by dredge. The Varl has back the Varl have backed away in fear. Ivan stops before the stilt legged feature. Suddenly, Ivor is behind beside you. So we can either suggest that we help him. I'm assuming we're still playing Rook. Um What is that thing? Say another. I'm gonna ask what that thing is. A stone singer, mutters Ivor. As close as the dredge come to menders of their own. I've only seen one before. It didn't go well. So we can either continue to watch this. We should do something. Can Ivan win this? I'm gonna ask the question. I don't know. I think we'll find out. So, here are the options. We can either just say nothing and see what happens. We can suggest to help him, or we could, you know, bow out and say we'd only get killed ourselves trying to help. We'd only get ourselves killed trying to help. Vote now. I'll give it a few extra seconds. <laughs> Dang, I mean, we gotta take action, right? Uh, yeah, that's kind of what, kind of the way I was, I was leaning. We're cornered. You expect Ivor to refuse, but instead he locks eyes with you. Listen to me, Rook, he says. You will probably die here, and so will everyone else who steps on that bridge. Look at your daughter. Are you prepared for that? Okay, the, the, uh, the now, now the responses are, you're not doing this alone, or no, I'm not. I mean, I think we have to, because I, I, I mean, we're, we're going to end up having to fight anyways. Why not make the stand here? That way Ivan, Ivan doesn't have to do this by himself. I'll wait to see what you think, Tang, since it looks like you're the only one here. Exactly. Okay, I'm, I'm assuming that means you're not doing this alone. I won't stop you, says Ivar. Fight like it's your last. You're not sure what to expect, but you draw your axe and soon find yourself standing behind Ivan on the bridge, wondering if you made the right decision. We gonna get boned. Oh, cool. We can take our whole group here. Um... Rank 5 Mender.
Um, yeah, we're going to. Hmm. Nope. Let's grab Fasolt. And we'll do. Nope. Question is, is do I want old life or do I want the the uh, do I want a varl again? I can go three varl, three humans. Yeah, I think I'm gonna slot in Krumir. Okay, I think that's. Oh, that's the menu. Okay, not what I wanted. But that might let me go buy something. Ooh, what's this? Obsidian ring. A ring? Okay. Well, only one who can use it is Rook. And I like his dodge. Gonna try YouTube, see if latency is better. Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's let's see how this goes. Ooh. I was about to say. I think we're actually outnumbering them here. So that's the. Let me know too if the music's too loud. So we've got a Sunslinger in the back. Stone Singer. Disease strike. Enemies are diseased on contact, losing one strength per turn. Oh, balls. Okay, so he can restore he can restore armor. Um, but not health, not strength. Okay, so I'm going to try to keep him back. His lightning attack, too, may come in handy here. I'm gonna move so that when I do this, it doesn't hit Fossil on accident. There's the big guy.
Oh, so that dude just, he just hailed health. That's kind of not what we want. stars this is okay this may actually end up hurting Ivor too nope okay cool Let's get the big guy down. Go, Rook. Six? God dang. He's gonna... Nope. There we go. Oh crap, they are all poisoned. Knocking down armor, I guess. Okay, Ivor can't like go anywhere, it looks like. He's kind of hemmed in. Yep. Okay, if we can t 
take down this archer, I think we can start to bring down the mender. Yep. Fossil tube ton like nothing this this I think we've got this. Yep. Boom. Ivan has been injured in battle, you guys. Krumir has been injured in battle. I actually forgot Krumir was fighting. <laughs> the stone slinger falls hard. A howl like a hurricane sweeps across the bridge. The dredge part like a black sea. From their depths steps a crimson behemoth. And a wave of sheer terror hits you like you've never felt below. Before. Bellower. Get the mender out of here, Ivor hisses, and run. Your legs move, almost with the will of their own, though you can't pull yourself away from watching what happens next. Gods, what was I thinking? Oh, balls! Well, pretty sure. Well, he he just he bellowed. Defeat. Well. Zero or now, you guys. Ivor writhes in agony, his arm torn clean off by Bellower's onslaught. The Sundir raises his weapon for the killing blow. Sundir, face me, screams an uncertain Ivan, stepping back onto the bridge, raising his staff high. Even from here, you can see his arm trembling. You feel practically frozen in place, watching. Ivan recoils in terror from the massive serpent that has appeared in the distance, and even Bellower backs away. It leans in close to inspect the two armies, flicks its great tongue, and then indifferently lurches over the mountainside and out of sight. The dredge are a knot of confusion. Some cower, others crouch in what looks like worship. Hakon shouts orders above the din. Varl rush forward, bowling over a surprised dredge, gaining ground. Bellower has receded back into the horde. Jorinder watches from atop the stairs. Hurry, says Ivan, suddenly pulling her arm, snapping you out of the moment. You rush to Ivor, laying on the ground amidst the fighting, still breathing despite missing an arm, and drag him back into the city. Yeah, that that went that could have gone better, Tang. You are you are quite correct. Let's talk to Ivor. Alette, can you save? Yes, probably. Give me silence. Nearly three hours pass silently as Ivan plies his trade. Flesh slowly forms and closes around Ivar's torn frame. That is much as I can do. He should make it. Thank you, says Alette. The mender looks exhausted, leaning heavily against the bed. When was the last time you slept? Rook asks. A couple days ago. I'm okay. Just need to sit. Before you can catch him, the mender crumbles to the floor. Chapter 5. Weary, wait, 
weary the weight of the sun. Your sight swims as if underwater. Memories fly away like startled ravens before you can capture them. With great effort, you remember who you are, Juno. You realize that a monumental serpent is speaking to you now. Your last certainty was that you died some time ago, and that is about to happen again. Frustrating, says the serpent. You are slow to understand the serpent. It speaks in a language that, rec that recalls very ancient memories of words you learned long ago. If you are not going to die, I suppose we must speak instead. Who are you? So, we can go with I don't know. My name is Juno. What does it matter? I like the idea of uh, Juno kind of mouthing off to the serpent, but I also kind of don't want to press my luck there. I think I'm just going to say my name is Juno, because we, we know our name is Juno, based on the conver based on the dialogue before. You are a Juno. It means nothing to me. Maybe I have asked the wrong question. What are you? What is your purpose? So we can tell him that we're a mender. I cannot remember. Or first, tell me what you are. I think we're going to ask, I think I, I'm going to ask what he is. Though, I can totally see the serpent getting pissed and going, and, and going off on us for that. I love the, uh, the pattern work on her clothes. Do you ask the hammer what the blacksmith is making? Yeah, see? <laughs> this, this conversation becomes more meaningless by the word. What do your prophecies say? The gods gave you prophecy, fate, destiny. Is there no child coming to slay me with magic sword? Are there no stars in the sky foretelling this dis disaster? Do you truly not know? So we can reply with, the gods are dead. I have no idea what you are talking about. I will know if you tell me, or we can just say nothing. I I, I kind of don't know on this one, because the gods are dead. I mean, it said that it was the very first thing the game told us. The gods are dead. Um, do we want to give the serpent that information? Who's Who clearly, he obviously doesn't know that. I mean, the gods seem kind of dead. They are dead. That was the very first thing they told us when um, when we started up the game was the gods are dead. The sun has stopped moving. Um, <clears throat> we could play dumb. I have no idea what you are talking about. I would know if you tell me. Um, we can just say nothing.
I'm kind of... Yeah, I was kind of leaning with one as well. Dead. How was that? Are you a god? No. <laughs> the gods are silent, and before me stands one who knows not what they have done. Listen carefully now, for I will give you a prophecy, the serpent says. I am the end. Do you understand? This world and this tapestry I would devour. It is my purpose. But I cannot. Instead, now comes a wall of night to consume your pitiful world. Wall of night? The dredge? Dredge? Stone men marching across a lone bridge? No, it is darkness. The egg white that has turned black. I am meant to devour the tapestry itself, not idly witness the dusk smother this rock. I am incomplete, a worm crawling through a dung field. Because of you, who are you to take my destiny? What are you? Return what is mine. Okay. That serpent does not like Juno. <clears throat> Ivind, Juno says. J Juno, you, you're alive. You're alive. How, where are you? Wait, where am I? <laughs> Asleep, I presume, or unconscious. I am in Ridgehorde, I think. A serpent was trying to kill me. Now, I'm talking to you. Time is moving strangely. I've lost swaths of memories. But I found you, for a short time at least. The serpent said something about a long bridge. So I took a guess. It came after you. We saw it at Einartoft. Are you okay? It tried to turn me to ash after we spoke. I'd be surprised if that's the last we've seen of it. I would tear the land apart and crush cities of it. It could tear the land apart or crush cities if it wanted. What do we do? Juno says it gets worse. A prophecy of the gods that I've never heard of. There are still prophecies out there? Ivan asks. It was vague. It sounded like that serpent was supposed to swallow the world. Instead, some kind of darkness or nothingness is seeping in from the north. It devours whatever it touches. That would explain why the dredge are swarming on us like someone kicked an anthill. Ivand, are you in danger? You could say so. Bellower is here. The Varl are holding him off, but not for much longer, I think. Of all the Sundur... Why the immortal one? Bellower. That is the worst of luck. I would have you come to me, but... We will have to do this the hard way. Listen closely. I will return to Strand and find passage down the Red River. You must leave Einartoft and leave me and meet me in Sigurholm. Juno will never make it to Sigurholm. Bellower is about to overtake us. The Varl won't listen to a thing I... Find a way, Juno says. Do whatever it takes. I will not be able to contact you again before Sigurholm. Go. And Ivand. Yes? I love you. <laughs> I don't know why I read that. Like, <laughs> like Saddam Hussein in South Park. I love you. Rook says, you spent a lot of time next to him since he passed out. Just keeping an eye on him. It's not like that, Dad. He saved Ivor. He might save the rest of us. Can he hear us? He just moved. How long was I? You were out a for a couple of days. How do you feel? Juno. She's alive. I need to meet her in Sigurholm. Hold on. Slow down. Who's Juno? She's my mentor on the Mender Council. She contacted me. Contacted you how? She's not like most Menders. What happened here since I passed out? The Varl are holding the dredge back, but just barely. 
Bellower has disappeared. Ivor is still out of it. Jorinder sent Hakon, Ludin, and a couple hundred Varl away to Aberang. We don't know how long we'll be able to hold out here. Rook, I need your help. Take me to Sigurdholm. Juno was going to meet us there. Sigurdholm? That's got to be a week away, at least. And just abandon Einartoft? Maybe, or... No, I could destroy that godforsaken bridge myself. That would delay the immediate threat, but... Jorinder will never agree to it. I need to understand a few things, Ivan. Okay. So we're going to ask the questions. Uh, the first one, why won't the Varl King destroy the bridge? Ivan says, I can't completely understand it myself. The last time I mentioned it, he made his mind very clear. He'll let the city and the rest of the world fall before that damned bridge. Okay. How could you collapse the bridge by yourself? Not by myself. I could blast it apart, but this bridge wasn't made to fall. It'll take time and concentration. That's why I need your help. And the Varl will try to stop me. It could mean holding off both the dredge and the Varl. What do we do about Bellower? I can't stop him, but I believe Juno can. That's why we need to go. We could just leave. And let the Varl die to give us a head start, Led asks. It's not my first choice. I've done everything I can on my own. Okay, what is going on around here? That serpent, Bellower? Look, I know things are... It's a long story. How well do you know history? We're from a very small town in the woods, Alet says. I'll keep it short, Ivan responds. You know how men and Varl were made, the Loom Mother, the other gods. In the first great war, the armies of men and Varl hated each other. They fought bitterly for land and dominance. But then one of the gods created the dredge. Inside their differences, they threatened to wipe out both races. So they did. They ended the war, pushed the dredge into the north, and formed an alliance that has held ever since. The second great war began generations later. The Dredge rallied their forces, defeated the Varl who watched the borders and laid waste to unsuspecting settlements throughout the world. They were led by Sundur, a powerful Dredge, powerful Dredge warlords and weavers like Bellower. He was there in the Second Great War. Humanity was on the brink of extinction when the inner circle of Menders went forth and finally sent the Sundur and the Dredge deep underground. For the most part, the Dredge haven't tried to return since. Well... Until now. Ooh, I didn't realize you could zoom in. Look at that. Look at those hands. Oh, zoom in literally anywhere where the mouse is. Okay, I found something new to play with. Those menders were called Valka. Juno wasn't there herself, but she's from their bloodline. So another great war has begun. If I didn't think the world was ending, it would be incredible. Ancient history is playing out before us. Hi, Lisbeth. What about the serpent, Alet asks. That's another story. I, There's nothing in the Mender's libraries about that thing. It must have something to do with the dredge returning. That seems likely. I need time to think about this. I understand. Be quick, Rook. There has to be some way to... I can't believe the Varl would be so stubborn. Speak to Jorinder yourself. He's in the Great Hall. Maybe you'll have more luck. Or maybe he'll put your head on a spike. Rook, I hate to pull... Put all of this on your shoulders, but I've got a few... But I've got few friends here. Come to a decision quickly. Either way, we can't stay. We have to make it to Sigurdholm. Juno will know what to do. So we're going to go talk to Jorinder, the Varl King. You'll do as I say. Fasolt says, I'm not here to argue. I'm telling you that we're dying by dozens every day now. You sent our best away with Hakon. How long do you expect us to last? You asked for this command, Fasolt. 
Don't let them get across that bridge. Fasolt takes his leave as you approach. Not great timing, you think to yourself. Thank you for the audience. I forget your name. Rook. Rook, how is Ingvar? Will he survive? I think so. If I remember Yngvar well enough, he hasn't told you why he faced down Bellower, did he? So, we can respond with, oh, of course he did, and just straight up lie. Uh, no, he keeps, he keeps things to himself, which is true. Or we could say, we could actually just straight up ask what I would be interested to hear. I kind of want to know. Whether or not the king will tell us. I would say, too, no, he keeps things to himself. I mean, we could respect his privacy. If if Ivor wanted us to know, maybe he would have maybe he would have told us himself. Okay, we'll go with two. Yes, that sounds right. Ingvar confronted a Sundir in his youth during the Great Wars. He won that fight. None other but the Menders have done that. He proved us stronger. Maybe he thought to do it again. Ivar killed the Sundar. How did he end up in Skogar? You'd have to pry that information from him yourself. I don't know. He disappeared when the last, tra when the last king tried to name him Kender. It occurs to you that Yorunder would not be on the throne now had that, not, had that happened. Yo! But why are you here, Rook? Be brief. Okay, so we can... Um, we, we can just diplomatically say, I'm offering to help take apart the bridge. We could just straight up say, the bridge needs to be destroyed. Or we can apologize for wasting his time and just peace. I'm, based on what Ivan said, straight up telling him the bridge needs to be destroyed probably isn't the best course of action. But I don't want to waste... Like, I, I don't want to waste the conversation by selecting three. So I'm, I'm leaning towards one. <laughs> I think it's only one or three. Lean three and just do it behind their back. We could. But like Ivan said, that would then have us fighting both Varl and Dredge. Because, like, there, there was an option in the in the settlement for us to blow up to, to, to destroy the bridge so yeah that sounds bad yeah treasure hard enough last thing i need is angry varl as well i'm gonna go one human if there is one more mention of that bridge yorinder's mood changes almost instantly if you have nothing else to say get out of my damned hall Okay, so we could just ask, what is so important about that bridge? We're all at stake here. You just straight up tell them we're all at stake here. Or peacefully bow out. I kind of am leaning one again this time.
Every man I've ever met thinks he'd rival the gods himself. If only he were in charge, Yorinder says. I'm over 400 years old, and all I know, and I know that I know little. You are a child, an infant, yet you know everything. Wow. Listen, human, this story is not about you. If you jump from that bridge today, the world would not change. Now either help Fossil to retake it or leave my city. I don't care which. Guards are quick to usher you from the Great Hall. You don't resist. Welp. Alright, so. Now we can fight on the bridge with Fossil. We could destroy the bridge. We can just straight up leave. Um, I'm going to go to the market real quick. Ooh, Valka thread. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Obsidian powder. Padded undercloak. I think... So he said that we're four... Or it, okay, so he said that it's a week away. We've got 14 days worth of supplies already. Um, so I think we're good on supplies. Assuming we don't have another thing light on fire. I'll let you guys mull this over real quick. I'm going to step away, get some more water, and then we'll make a decision on whether or not we're going to just straight up peace, fight with Fasolt on the bridge itself, or just destroy the bridge.
So, it looks like you either want to fight or destroy. Um, I'm personally leaning fight, because the last thing I want to do is fight both Varl and Dredge. So if I'm, gonna, if I'm gonna fight, I would much rather just fight one enemy, right? There's always Bellower who can show up again as well, too. So are you guys leaning fight as well? Okay, so we're gonna fight then, huh? I'm going to... Oh, balls. Well. But first of all, my mouse just decided it didn't want to work anymore. I totally forgot that those guys were injured and there's no way to rest. I can level up Rook. Nope, can't level up Rook. Don't have enough renown. That's fantastic. Since I can't level up Rook, <clears throat> um, we're going to go ahead and grab that Valka thread. Yeah, I'm thinking about slotting an Onef as well. Assuming my mouse decides it wants to, you know, hold down the button. Rook is our strongest character right now, so we're going to try to give him a bit more health. And then I th <clears throat> I was actually I bought the Valka thread for Ivan. have any more level ones, I guess. <coughs> nah, I'd rather have Onef had that. I might 
Oh, Echiel's already in the lineup. That's why I can't slot him in. All right. At the war front, Rose of Varl are lined up, waiting for their turn to fill in as the warriors on the bridge battle dredge in one endless churn of bodies and blood. <coughs> Fossalt catches your eye, and in between giving orders. You lost, human, he says. So we're gonna offer to help. <coughs> Fair enough, Fossalt admits. I'm not gonna argue against putting you on the bridge, he says. But we've got plenty of wounded here as well, if you can work a needle. Okay, so we can either fight on the bridge, we can treat the wounded, or we can make an excuse and bow out. Would you guys like to treat the wounded or actually fight? I apologize for having to eat too. Um, my blood sugar went down, so I'm kind of trying to bring it up real quick. Aren't we more fighters than medics? You're not wrong. So I'm assuming, based on that comment, you think we should fight. <laughs> well, I guess we can fight. Fossil nods and puts you in line with the others. Don't be a hero, he grunts. Kill a few and come back alive. A slow... Yeah, I don't feel like backing down now. I was already prepared to fight. Yeah. A slow terror starts to creep in from waiting to go into battle, but eventually you find yourself face to face with rows of dredge packed so shoulder to shoulder. Okay, there are five of them, six of us, but they've got three big dudes. We'll see how this goes, you guys.
Ah. Uh, if she were one over, she could hit him. Do not like Rook. Like at, at all. Dang, enough. He's gonna drop some. Oh crap. <clears throat> you got this, Achille. Well, Onaf is getting pounded too. And now so is Ekhil. And now so is Odle. This is, this is going well, you guys. Well, we'll kill this one. There goes that kill. I can take down his armor and we can start hitting it. Why he hit his uh, armor makes no sense to me. Oh! Oh, I can't. He doesn't have a free spot. Well, I can hit him for two. Yep, there goes on F. But, freaking Alette hasn't moved for like three turns and so she's just getting buffed to heck. Alright. 
Nice. It, it was it was a good good run there, Rook. Same thing with Odalife, she hasn't moved either. Last. Yep. Oh, I have to move to hit him. That's okay, I can still kill him. We got this. It was looking pretty bad there for a second, but... Ooh, sweet! Odalife is finally gonna get a kill! After all this time. <laughs> Your renown grows, you guys. Tempered by blood and pain. Okay, but well that went by way too quickly. Okay, we have like all of the injured people here. And we can't rest. So... You swear the fighting is getting more vicious and dangerous. Again, you let the Lion of Varl push past... Push into battle when you don't dare to risk it anymore. Come on back tomorrow if you're looking for more, says Fasolt. You sleep poorly. Ivan's suggestion to collapse the bridge repeating in your mind. Well. Still can't promote. Dudes are injured. Like, we'll have no choice but to bring injured people into battle. Or, we can just leave. Or, we can destroy the bridge. <laughs> um, I think if we choose to fight, I think this, I think this time we can, we choose to heal. Uh, just to see if it gives us an extra day. Unless you guys disagree. Yeah, okay, Tang. Can we heal people this time? <laughs> Let's find out. You approach the bridge, which gets a raised eyebrow from Fasalt, who is legging a dead warrior over his shoulder. Back for more, he says, glancing out onto the bridge. You can tell they've lost ground on the bridge since yesterday. Okay, so we're going to just help remove the bodies. What's the plan here, you ask with concern? I just do what Yorinder tells me, replies Fasolt. And right now, we're killing every dredge on that bridge, so throw in or piss off. If you don't want to fight, help me clear bodies off the bridge. Our warriors are getting choked up around them. You follow Fasolt, making several dangerous trips near the battleground to pull bodies back into the city. The sight of you and other men struggling to carry lifeless giant bodies would be comical if the circumstances weren't so grievous. Your whole body is aching when you stop for the day. The bodies seem to pile up almost as quickly as you can remove them, and the work is heartbreaking. Okay, so we got another day. Uh, Rook is back. Uh, we So is Ivand, so I'm going to go ahead and slot Ivand in here for... Um, Onef, or Echil. No, Onef. Um... So we can do that again, and we'll get Krumir, Ekhil, Onef back. Vassalt still needs two more days. Um, but that looks like to be the only way to rest is by, you know, helping heal or whatever. Or, you know, we could leave or we could destroy the bridge. I think we're two days in on fighting on the bridge. We we try our luck again there. 
and see if he gives us an option to just essentially rest one more day to at least get back three or four more people and then we could potentially fight uh, one more time build up some more renown so we can level people up as you approach on the third day the warriors are in more disarray than usual where's fossil do you ask one of the passing varl didn't make it he replies dredge are nearly at the mouth of the bridge barely held back your mind starts to wander into dark places you snap back to attention when you realize nearly the entire army of varl are staring in your direction Ivor walks past, shuffling slowly with an enormous axe in his remaining hand. He heads towards the bridge. Ivor, you yell, but he doesn't reply, plunging his axe into the nearest dredge before kicking it over the side of the bridge. Come on, he screams at the Black Horde. Cursing, you rush to his side in battle. Well, fossil has gone. Don't have to worry about him healing. I don't know, I don't like Onef, I like Echiel, so, like, if I'm gonna lose somebody, I'd rather it be Onef. Um, ba, ba, ba. Oh, god dang it, mouse. This has been happening all weekend, and it's frustrating the balls out of me. Um, I'm not using my G502, I'm using my Razor Naga Trinity, and this thing has not held up. Okay. Well, I guess we're fighting again, you guys. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to try to get the archers just kind of in here in the back. Freaking Ivor is already back up here with this just massive axe. Alright. Oh yeah, hit the mender. You know, be a dick. He just got out of hospital, guys. Come on. I want to bring them in closer. So I don't have to move. Um... What's the range on his lightning? Okay, so I don't have to move far, and it should bounce. Yeah, it should bounce. Nice. Twelve? You freaking- wow! Um... Right? <laughs> the nice thing is, they're all cluttered together, so I could potentially lightning again. The downside is, Ivan is five turns away. Twenty two health. This might be one of those moments where if I lose this fight, I lower the difficulty. Yeah, freaking 11 on that attack. 
That's insane. I was actually rather hoping it would hit the big guy. Well, there goes Rook. Nope! Crap, he ain't dead. How? This, this isn't going well for us, you guys. They're all hitting Ivan, but they're damaging his... So gonna Okay, so it's only gonna hit one of these guys, so if I'm gonna choose one. Well, might as well kill one of these guys. Go. Old life. He needs to die before his next turn. Thank God I've got Rook. Oh my gosh. <laughs> RNG gods, give this to me. Holy crap. <laughs> I had a 90% chance to be deflected. Guys, I'm cool if you want to just keep hitting his armor. That's not going to bother me. What does he have? Five. Well... Can I play keep away long enough to just burn these guys down now? I need him to not hit a lead essentially right now. That's that was the wrong person. Still just hitting his armor. That's actually still really surprising. Okay, so I probably got one arc lightning left in him, so we're gonna make it count. Ivan just killed like five dudes today. He needs to die before his next turn. Can we do it? Nope. Not if we're only hitting for one. Thank you, sweet baby Jesus.
Remember that time when Ivor got hit for 12 and I thought that this was over? Oh yeah, Onef got injured too. <laughs> Enough of this, groans Ivor, who seems to have snapped out of his daze. This is getting nowhere. You follow as he climbs the stairs and throws open the doors of the Great Hall. Ingvar, glad to see you well, Jorinder says. You swear you catch a note of trepidation in the king's voice. Jorinder, enough. This fight cannot be won. Again this? I'll be damned if that bridge falls during my reign. Poor Onef is a meat shield. That is 100% true. You'll let your whole race die, Ivor says. We'll all be gone someday, Ingvar. I need not tell you. There are no more Varl being made tomorrow or a thousand years from now. We are it. And I will not destroy what we have made. Would you leave no trace of us when we are gone, as if we never existed? I know this, but yours is one voice of many. I know that the Varl are equal. The days of Kendir are over, says Ivor. I ask these Varl, all that is left in the world, to follow me and live another day. Who do you think they will choose? The weight of the air in the Great Hall becomes so thick it nearly suffocates you. The silence continues for ages. Go on. Take the mender. Destroy the bridge. Do it and leave. Take whoever would join you and do not return to my city. The alliance of man and Varl is through. Ivor is almost out the door before Jorinder has finished his sentence. You guys, we're going to blow up a bridge. Led by Ivor, the Varl push hard one last time against the dredge until there is room enough for Ivan to take position to start raining down lightning bolts on the bridge supports. Before long, the masonry is shattered, is a shattered mess and begins to give, un give under its own weight. Varl and dredge alike race to escape the collapse. When the dust clears, there is a gulf between you and the furious dredge. They won't be crossing this way. You've gotten what you wanted, says Jorinder. Now leave. If I ever see Man or Mender again, it will be too soon. Ivan tells you, Juno will be waiting for us in Sigurholm. Despite the end of the immediate threat, many Varl choose to join Ivor instead of following Jorinder. You depart with a long, with a long caravan at your heels. Chapter 6 of our bones the hills well I guess it is it's better to have their support in this yeah I guess so well one thing we could have done is bought supplies you guys we still have enough for a week though I think which he said this is only a week-long journey so You notice most of the Varl pacing while others sleep, their brief conversations with each other, which each other and other clansmen grow shorter and sharper. Go away, roars one Varl at a young girl asking him too many questions. All the clansmen stop and stare. So we can... <laughs> Wouldn't be a proper Sunday night if we weren't sweating the food supplies. Too true, Tang. Um, so we can break the tension by making a joke. I'm impressed you've kept it together this long. Send the Varl ahead in the caravan and put some space between you. Or we could just straight up ask, what's wrong with you? Um, I'm, I'm going to try and break the tension. I don't know, not for. I'm going to try to break the tension by making a joke. 
I think you just ruined your dream of marrying a viral boy, you say, timing your smile just right. The giant grins, then throws his head back with the booming laughter. Other Varl join in the mirth, and the caravan feels a bit lit uplifted for it. You guys were good at telling jokes. The giant explains, We live in the north for its space. Endless miles of snow, ice, mountains, fields. Space to be alone. But here, there is no time for such things. <clears throat> Understanding slowly trickles through the caravan, relieving some of the tension. Oh hey you guys, our morale improved. It's also day 101 of our journey. Okay, morale just declined you guys. While walking, the words of a mother's song reach you. It's soothing, nuanced, and about your current journey. When she finishes, a man begins a tale of, of his own in verse. The woman quickly responds with another poem and the entire caravan slows to listen to the entertaining competition. Uh, so, <clears throat> we can join the crowd and cheer on the competitors. We need to stay vigilant, you guys. Uh, we could join in with a verse of our own, or ignore the poetry contest and keep an ear out for danger. I feel like with... with the way we've been playing Rook, either joining the crowd to cheer them on, <clears throat> or just ignoring it altogether and keeping an ear out while they celebrate would kind of be like the most likely thing. You like three? Ignore the poetry contest and keep an ear out for danger? Okay, let's go with that. The laughter and cheers continue behind you as you put some space between the remain to remain undistracted. The male contestant soon admits defeat, and the clansmen quickly march on, thankful for the lighthearted distraction. Morale improved, you guys. Okay, so we're going to Sigurdholm, I believe. It appears that large figures following from the direction of Einertoft. Ordleif watches intently before finally saying, They have a cart. I can hear it. You slow to get a better view and spy a small caravan of Varl. Eventually they catch up. <clears throat> Ubin! Greetings, Ivor. It's been quite a while since we talked, hasn't it? I know you. Ubin. Never imagined you to be one to defy the king. What made you leave? Someone had to, Ubin responds. What do you mean, Rook asks. Bellower is heading this way. Already? How is that possible? A group of Varl from Wormtoe showed up around the back of Einartoft, the long way. Bellower and his army chased them across the summer path, they said. Past Wormtoe? That doesn't make any sense. Bellower was on the bridge. He must have doubled back after that serpent appeared. While we fought on the bridge, he had he led half his forces around the approach to approach Einartoft from behind. The attack on the bridge was a feint? Don't let anyone tell you the dredge aren't clever, Ivor says. Einartoft will fall within a day. Maybe not. He's following you. I thought one of you might know why, Ubin asks. You exchange nervous glances, but nobody speaks up. Must be me, then. If Is there something I don't know? That's quite a grudge he's holding if he's coming for you, Ivor. It doesn't matter, Ivan says. Our only chance is to get to Sigurdholm. Juno will know what to do. We'll join you. I bring supplies. Yes! And warriors and my friend Gunnolf here bears a heavy sword. I believe he'd be happy to swing it for you. We got supplies, you guys. We got 14 days worth of food, you guys. We've got gun off, you guys. Um, I'm gonna make camp here. 
just to make sure that all of our dudes... Oh, crap. They don't rest while we're traveling. They only rest when we make camp. All right, well, we're going to do that. <laughs> Rook, don't talk much, do you? You approach the massive green-clad Varl, who is sitting quietly by himself, eating bread. So? Just wanted to know anyone who can cleave a dredge in two like that a little better. I'm Rook. What to know? Ubin asks me to chop a dredge in two. I chop him. Have you traveled with Ubin long? Yes, long time. When I was young, I fight for another Varl. It did not work out. <laughs> But I learned to swing a sword. Ubin pays well. Gives me plenty of things to kill. To be honest, maybe too many things these days. You like that sword, huh? No. I love this sword. Given to me by old Skrimir himself. When I started working for Ubin, he says, I protect the king's collection. I protect the king. Gunolf makes an expression somewhere between pain and frustration. I couldn't save it, though. Oh, he's talking about the uh, King's Tithe. He makes a hand motion like a falling, ob like an object falling from a tall height and exploding. Mattered a lot of the time. I think it doesn't matter now. Screamer is dead anyway. Not sure it's worth Bellower though. I don't know. I'll let you finish your meal. You want to be friends with Gunolf, Rook? He pops the last hunk of bread into his mouth. Keep food in the cart. <laughs> Alright. Um, so, I think... Okay, yeah. Uh, Ivor needs two more days. Ooh, good off is level three now. Uh, so, yeah. We're going to get Onef out of there, you guys. <gasps> We've got renown. I can level people up. Okay, let's get... Okay, I guess I can't level him up. Oh, he's already been leveled up. Um... Okay, yeah, no, we're gonna just do that. Let's get Alette to level... Three. Improve your ability. Thread the needle. By selecting an enemy in a straight line up to five tiles, the eagle eye shoots through every character in the way, doing normal strength damage to each, in addition to bonus armor break and puncture damage. Even though it also hits allies, abilities like Raid Master Stonewall make a good combination. I don't know what Raid Master Stonewall is. I've never seen that. Do we have a Raid Master? That's a Grudge Wielder. Wielder. That's a Backbiter. War Leader. War Hawk. Well, Poop. Oh, crap. I can level her up again? She is kind of like kicking ass and taking names. If I level her, I can't level Rook. Hmm. Let's max out her strength right now at least. I think I'm going to level Rook just because he's got, he's got, um, that melee attack as well. <clears throat> okay, do I want the extra strength? I think we'll keep that. I think we'll keep the obsidian ring there. Um, can I level up her weapon, her item I mean though? Nope. Okay. We're going to keep that one there. We're going to take the item away from Onef and give it to Odleif. All right. 
And then we'll rest two more days. Everyone should be back up to fighting strength. The caravan stops at a split in the road. Ahead, the path leading to Seeger Holmes veers off into the hills, which are now swimming with familiar black shapes. Dredge that way too, grimaces Ivan. The summer path leads straight to Seegerholm, while taking the main road will add several days. They're every way by now, replies Ubin. I suggest we go around past Hauksdorp. <clears throat> okay, so we can either start cutting a path of the dredge, send scouts to see how dangerous the summer path looks, uh, or we can do what Ubin says and go around past Hauksdorp. Hauksdorp. Ubin is the one with the most info, I trust him. I would agree there. I hate to say it, you tell Ivan, but I'm not willing to walk into Swarms of Dredge anymore. Juno will have to wait. You turn toward the long round ar around Hauksdorp instead, hoping you've saved lives in the process. <clears throat> I think, well, I don't know what that is. That might be Hawkstorp. A trail of blood leads to a clearing where you find a large wounded Varl. He is gnawing on his shield, swearing at no one in particular, and occasionally slamming his cudgel on the ground. If not for the heavy bleeding, he'd leave this one alone without second thought. Uh, so we can either have the healers tend to his wounds, we can help you if you want it, uh, that's what we tell them. We can help you if you want it. Or leave food and medicine and walk away. Or we can abandon him completely. I think we try number three. Two women cautiously step toward the giant with a few poultices. One gently locates the bleeding wound. The Varl's eyes widen and slams her into the ground. He manages to kill the other healer with his weapon before your warriors cut him down. The others say nothing as you wordlessly return to the caravan. Oh, balls. Okay, is this Hauksdorp? You enter a village of miners who want to know what has been happening recently between the rumblings of the quake and sightings of dredge in the distance. As you look around, you see a lot of elderly and children and know that these people will only be more miles to feed. So we can either encourage them to join us, let them make their own decision, don't expand the caravan further. We got enough food, right? We got eight days worth of food. It was a week-long journey. We added a couple days to it. Now, there is a market here. We could potentially buy food. But, like, why? Keep in mind, all of these little interactions here, too, matter to some characters so you have to remember like every decision that we make even like the small insignificant one, insignificant ones like this could potentially turn into something like Gunolf saying earlier that uh talking about the cart I mean the biggest thing about that is Gunolf survived um but I don't know I would lean towards letting them make their own decision but that also could potentially leave people here to get just get slaughtered by the dredge. Um, I kind of wish they let me 
check out the market first before this, but I think this is on purpose. I guess tell them what's up and let them choose. Okay. You welcome anyone who wishes to join the caravan. Many do, while others choose to stay in their homes and see things through. You wish them luck. Yeah, they didn't add any supplies, you guys. Uh, one renown gets six days, six supplies, though, which is actually, like, really good. Ooh. Oh, man, if only I had all of the renown, you guys. That's actually really cool. Two strength resist. But we go and buy some supplies. Let's see, we are heading to Sigurholm. Oh crap, we're going back towards Skogar. Okay, so Sigurholm is here. We're now going this way through the high pass versus going through the summer path. Huh. Okay. Everyone's good, right? I still can't believe Odleif, after all this time, is still level one. How do they get XP? Uh, by killing. They have to do a. They have to, they have to be the one to do a final blow, and so far she hasn't done that. Look at that! Shouts one of the clansmen. The caravan stops to watch Dredge pulling into the village. He just passed through. I hope anyone who stays behind got out alive, says Alette. But you have your doubts. They're coming, says Ivor, pointing out a line of Dredge that's leaving the village and marching toward you. As you watch, the Dredge, the Dredge in front falls over. Then you, the one behind it falls as well. You hear a twang to your left. Need, the archery student of Odalev's, who you recall deftly shooting a snow rabbit, is firing arrows down the hill. Another dredge topples. That's incredible, says Odalev, but we should get out of here. Okay, so we can either just say, Odes, right? Odds, right? Odes, life, right? Let's go. Return to the village looking for survivors? That's... We're not doing that, guys. I don't care what you say. <laughs> or hold on, let her do a few more. I'm of the... Let's put as much distance between the dredge and the caravan as possible. Mindset. Just leave. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm leading to. But why don't you come with us next time you want to try out that bow? You tell Nid, who nods, a smile on her face. Woot! I think we got a new hero, you guys. Some clansmen have discovered a large patch of wild fruit. When you approach, you see that some people have begun to sample them. A mother frets about whether they're safe after overhearing one of the children say that it tastes funny. Others start gathering by the basketful. <laughs> uh, so we can take a bite ourselves. We can discourage them from eating the fruit. We can observe someone who already ate some. Offer a piece to one of the animals in the caravan or gather as much as we can. Um, as much as I hate animal testing in real life, this is a video game. So that, that's on the table here. Um, I don't know. Funny tasting fruit in the wilderness tends to not be good. Could be a red herring, though.
Oh, excuse me. Why give it to the animal when people already ate it? That's true. Uh, so I, I'm gonna take that as observe someone who already ate some. After a short time, you note the slurred speech of a young man partaking of the fruit. Besides a little drunk, he seems perfectly fine. Okay, we can either take a bite ourselves, uh, discourage others from eating the fruit, or gather as much as I can. This is a great way to eradicate the caravan, saving supplies, but losing a ton of people in the process. If that turns out to be more nefarious than simply being drunk. <laughs> Do we want to lose a bunch of people? That sounds kind of bad, to be honest. Um, yeah, let's discourage others. Many clansmen follow your lead, while others continue eating and collecting. Uh, later that day, a few people stained, fruit-stained peasants stumble around with drunken grins. Apparently the fruit was fermented, not poisonous. Oh hey, we got some supplies, you guys. Godstone! I love this stone. Godstone of the Dun of Dunda pose passes around you. In the frozen climates here, it looks at like the rock is split and fa is falling apart, held together only by the deep snow. Curiously, when standing between the stones, the wind drops off completely, picking up once again, once you pass through. Yeah, every single decision point now feels like we could make huge game-ending mistakes. You're not wrong. I almost wonder if we should rest here for the night, says Ivor, who seems to have noticed the same thing. With all the snow around it, the dredge might not even be able to find us. Um, I think we're gonna stay here overnight. You walk around camp before settling in. Along each strand of Dundir's massive beard is carved a different part of his story. And you turn your head to and fro and read it. While the Loom Mother was the first to create, she soon found a counterpart in Dundir, who embodied her ideals in a masculine form. Dundir took some of her creations, gave them beards, and showed them the secrets of smithing, though many remember him just as fondly for teaching them games and songs of mirth. The camp settles. As the camp settles in, you notice a group of boys huddled around something. They show you an offering box carved into the godstone himself, itself. The box is an elaborate construction of interlocking pieces which slide around when touched. We can't get it open, they tell you. It's like a puzzle. Try to open it. The boys take turns working up the puzzle and give you tips when it's your turn, though you don't seem to make much progress. Eventually they leave to sleep until it's just you and a couple of other determined youngsters. We could give up and go to sleep, or we could keep working on the puzzle box. I'm gonna keep working on it. It's hard to know how long you spent sliding around the smooth puzzle pieces. When people begin emerging from the tents, you know you're in trouble, exhausted from a long, sleepless night. Or still, the box remains closed as you shuffle wearily along with the caravan. Well, Brook. Oh no. <laughs> okay, so this is Hawkstorp. Thieving bastards, you hear awaken to hear. The small band of outlaws who had previously joined the caravan made off with a substantial number of supplies while everyone slept, a watchman tells you. Why in the depths were they allowed to join us to begin with? That is 
quite a long time since they joined us that they ended up stealing from us. Wow. They took, like, all of the supplies, you guys. And here I was, feeling particularly good. In the distance... <laughs> yeah, wow. In the distance, Hawkstorp... Excuse me, smolders like an old campfire. Even from here, you can see black figures shambling up through it. That looks like a... Like... Ugh. That looks like a dead town, remarks Ivor, confirming your impressions. There's usually survivors, Odelef reminds you. Uh, so we can either check it out just in case, or there's no time, keep moving. Yeah, I we just lost 10 days worth of supplies, so I'm of a mind to just keep moving. Just get out of here. We've had enough problems for one lifetime, you say. We don't need to go looking for them. Probably the better decision, replies Ivor. <clears throat> oh god, let's just, we have four days, guys. Woman stifled screams fail to overly concern anyone. It was only a matter of time before the expectant mother gave birth. The caravan is simply excited by this first sign of new life since the trip began. Okay, so we can call for a day of rest and celebration. We have four days of supplies left. Congratulate the new parents privately. Uh, offer the family extra rations as gifts. Or do nothing special, allowing the mother and child some peace. I'm going to choose two. You discreetly make your way to the family's tent amidst cheerful clansmen. You give your most heartfelt congratulations to the parents, telling them how strong the young boy looks. The mother cries, and the father thanks you repeatedly. Hey guys, some morale improved. What is up there at the top of the hill? Oh, another godstone. There's a dredge here. The Godstone for Ingrid, goddess of knowledge, looks on as the caravan takes his, takes a much needed rest. That's Maluka, by the way. Ivor shoes some children away from the solitary dredge slinger lying dead beneath the stone. Should we be worried about that? You ask Ivor, pointing to the dredge body. I don't think so, he replies. Still, couldn't have a couldn't hurt to have a few guards look around. Hours pass without warning. Ingrid's godstone is carved with ancient ruins. Runes which don't make much sense to you. Though Ivan tells you that some of the Menders have deciphered them. It's how the Menders learned the language of the gods. Past the largest stone on a hill ser on a past the largest stone on a long series of slabs contain more writing all the way down the hill. The odd thing, he tells you, is that the writing occasionally changes depending on who is reading it. Usually it describes the history of the gods, but it can be about nearly any topic. Sadly, Ivan doesn't know how to read it himself. Juno could, he says. As you're re ready to depart, you hear screams from near the main godstone. The same boy, so curious about the dead dredge before, shrieking and pointing. For a moment, you think it must not have been dead. But then you see that they have opened a wrapping that was in the dredge's hands. Wait, says Ivor, his arm across your chest. 
This shouldn't be seen. Get everyone away. A chill sweeps over you. Alette pushes past and gasps. Stop! shouts Ivar, but the curious onlookers have already seen it. Leave it, says Ivar. On the ground before the dead slinger is a small, stony figure, its hands searching for something it can't find. That... that's a baby, Old Leif says. Is that Dredge a woman? Rook asks. We've been killing women. We've been slaughtering women and children this whole time, Old Leif asks. Leaving them to die? In war, it's only the males who fight, Ivor says. We've been fighting these dredge the whole way. Why are women and why are women with children on their backs attacking us? They're not invading. They're running, Ivor says. Everyone stops dead in their tracks. The entire caravan is gathered around, aghast. When I spoke to Juno, Ivan said, she told me something was coming. She didn't know what. A darkness. Something black is covering the world, and the dredge are running from it, just as we are running from them. The serpent, the quake, it's all the beginning of the end. Ivor, you knew, Audleif says. Why? Why didn't you say something? So, we could demand Ivor say something, or just Ivor? Or this isn't the time. Which, I mean, when is the time to talk about the helpless slaughter of women and children in war? But... I'm going to choose two, because I think that's been the most consistent way we've, we've uh, played Rook. Yeah, I think the only time we ever got really, like upset with Rook was when we were confronting Echil uh, for talking to Alette. Um, but that was because it involved Alette. I think right here, number two makes more sense for how we played Rook so far. When I was young, I killed one of the Sundur during the Great War. That's... We called it Raze. Every time we would build our defenses, it would flatten them and push us back again. I became separated from the rest of the Varl, and stumbled upon Ray's deep in a snowstorm, alone. She was nursing. I threw my axe, it twisted in the wind. Her son died in her arms. She was so pathetic, kneeling in the snow. She didn't even try to stop me when I took her head. That's how I killed a cinder. When I found my way to Grofheim, the Varl wanted me to make me Kender, the next king. I left. Walked until I ended up in Skogir, where no one knew what I had done. The only sound is the wind blowing through the trees. For a long time, nobody says a thing until a child breaks the silence. What do we do with the baby? she asks. A lump forms in your throat, looking at the small obsidian creature swimming before you. So, we can put it to a vote. Insist on taking it with the caravan, insist on leaving it behind, or just stay the, the fluff out of this one. Oh my god, right? So, here's the deal. It's a baby, right? But it's a, it's a dredge baby. So, like if this was like a Varl or a human baby, the quick answer is honestly insist on taking it with the caravan, right? But this is a dredge. And it kind of makes me wonder. I mean... I feel like Rook would still insist on taking it. Ivor would be against it. Old Leif would obviously be for it because she was horrified about the prospect of the fact that she was killing women and children this entire time. Um, 
Wonder how Alette would feel. She wasn't. Well, she was there, but. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Look. Need is there. She's right here. We got Ubin, Gonolf, Ivor, Rook, Alette, Ivan, Odleif, Onef, Echil. I honestly have no. I was hoping when I was pointing out all the different characters. I, I'd have a little help. I'm going to insist on taking it because I still feel like Rook would take pity on the... Like, leaving a dredge who's tried to kill you is one thing, but leaving a baby defenseless, it it brings up a whole other set of ethical questions that could come up later, right? You argue strongly for showing mercy and humanity. Some of the women in the caravan hesitantly agree to take in the dredge infant while others are furious about bringing it along not long afterward one of the women comes to you it's swaddling was being held by this she says giving you a hairpin that looks distinctly undredge like an inscription on the silver almost slips your notice persevere from the goddess herself if you ask me the woman tells you gained item okay well that went by really quickly You're making the usual rounds when you hear a rather loud debate coming from the area that Varl have gathered. Ivor joins you as you approach. Ubin, Krumer says, you'd rather be known for falling asleep and dying in the corner of a mead house than battling a sunder? No, I'd rather be known for not dying. God, I love Ubin. <laughs> Don't even know what you're worried about. I did this a hundred times in the Great Wars, Krumer says. Some Take some warriors, plow headfirst into the dredge. They follow you into the hills, get lost. Now they're not following you. When you did this a hundred times, do they have Bellower leading them? Ubin asks. Have you ever, never heard about the time I hit Bellower on the head with a throwing axe? Both Varl halt, halt their debate when they suddenly notice you watching. <laughs> What's this about? Don't stop on my account. You're planning to confront the dredge? <laughs> um, I love that sarcastic, don't stop on my account. Careful, my friend, Ubin says. A lot of old history getting thrown around here. Krumer says, the warriors were just noting that there's a got, there's a damn got good number of dredge on our asses. I can't read tonight. Bellower pulling up the rear, Ubin adds. No one thinks he can just wander up there and throw them off our tracks. This one thinks he can just wander up there. I, I seriously can't read tonight. How about some gratitude, Krumer says. Thought you'd be happy to finally be the oldest varl in the land, Ubin. <laughs> I'm never happy to lose more Varl, Krumir. Besides, I'm not convinced you're really older than me. Old rivalry got you. I want to explore that one. Comments like that remind me. I've already wasted too much time doing nothing, Krumir says. In the old days, I'd already be halfway to the battlefield by now. Speaking of which, you coming, Ingvar? I could ask Bellower for your arm back. Don't think so. Ivar says, not exactly in the mood right now. All right then, I'll tell Harborg you said hello. Krumir and a good many Varl warriors head out toward the growing army of Dredge. Is he going to come back? Rook asks. He always has before, Ivar says. But this time feels different, I fear, Ubin replies. Balls. Two days of supplies left, guys. Can we make it to Sigurholm? I think we're getting close.
No, I didn't. Okay, I meant to hit map, not rest. But, okay. Well, I can still hit. Where's the map? There's the map. Well, had to be done. <laughs> yeah, hopefully that gives us some some uh, space. Okay, yeah, so we're we're right by Seeger home. Let's talk to, to Need. I think it's Need. Yeah, Need. I don't know if we've ever spoken. I'm Need. You're Rook, I know. We've actually been traveling together for a long time. Isn't it strange how you can be so close to people and not know them? Every day I pass people I swear I've never seen before, Rook says. I wanted to thank you for letting me join you. Have you always been such a good shot? Honestly, I never even tried before Odelife made me. I spent my whole life making clothes, cleaning. Odelife's good, but I don't think that it was all her doing. It feels right. I just look where I want it to go. Anyway, I feel better. The caravan, the people worrying all day and making problems. Sometimes they really stew in their misery. I'm glad I can do something helpful. Where are you from? I don't think you're from Skogar. I knew most of the people there. No, I had a house in Frostfeather, but we were driven out when the dredge started to show up. My husband died trying to protect our home. My sons and I were thrown out into the fields. I'm sorry. Echil's men killed my husband. Now Echil is traveling with us. For a long time, I was angry. Why did he get to live? Why did you decide for the rest of us? You look away momentarily, not sure what to say. But I've let it go. I have three sons, and I don't want them to grow up with hatred in their hearts. That's why I wanted to thank you. You're welcome. I should be going. Don't think anything of it. We all have our own problems to deal with. Let me know if you need me to put an arrow in something. She returns to her tent with her, where her boys are waiting for her. Three sons, you guys. Also, Ekhil is kind of a dick for killing her husband, apparently. An old man sits astride an overgrown portion of the trail. You lost? He asks. He adjusts the leather strap on his head and says, No, are you? He jumps up and shuffles toward the caravan, his tattered clothes revealing no weapons. Well, I've seen better, the old man says, peering into the supply wagons, but I'll join you. He stands next to a fighter, throws his beard over his shoulder, and puffs up his chest. The fighter grins, and the stranger exhale, asking, what, asking, what are we waiting for? Lead the way. So we can either say, we've already got enough mouths to feed. You're welcome to join if you can keep pace, or who are you and what are you doing here? Uh, I'm, I'm so weary about, because the first thing you did was look at those supplies, right? I'm so weary of people coming in just to steal supplies that I'm gonna, I'm thinking about chasing this guy off. Yeah, I'm gonna chase this guy off. Feigning shock, the old man addresses a few of the children. Careful, you don't grow up like then. Unar never forgets. The old man looks at you, adjusts his leather head strap, and harumphs. He kicks the wagon wheel, winces, limps away. Okay, Seeger home is right there. We got one day left of supplies, you guys, and very low morale. Gather around, doubters, echoes a shout in the distance as Krumir and his band of warriors break through nearby foliage. And behold the invincible Varl. The caravan is thrilled to see Krumir return safely. Woot! Do the plan work? asks Ubin. Work, responds Krumir. Of course it worked. Same old dredge. Should be another day or two at least before they even find their own asses. And if you apologize, I'll tell how I found these, Krumir says, tossing you a pair of leather gloves that look big enough for a varl. He leans in close, whispering so Ubin can't hear. Had to do something with a raven's nest and a hair tie. Item gained, Dundur's hand. Can we make it to Sigurholm without going? As Sigurholm approaches, we fear the worst. The once calm lake surrounding it now looks like a bowl that has been flipped. Proud homes sinking into muddy water. A side effect of the quake. What has the rest of the world become on the other side of those mountains?
I'm so happy Krumir is back, you guys. One catastrophe to another, says Odleif as you pull into Sigurholm. The town appears to be sinking into the lake. Town suit will peek from the dark windows and makeshift hovels further up the hill. <laughs> they gotta love it when 450 men and Varl roll into a town with literally zero food. No, says Ivan, looking frantic. Where is she? He runs to the front of the caravan, looking out over the water. Juno isn't here, and you get the creeping filia. You're not welcome, either. Going upriver looks out of the question. The beach is bare, aside from the occasional skeleton of a ruined fishing boat. You reluctantly set up camp in the sinking town. All I'm saying is how long are you willing to wait, Olaf says. While taking stock of caravan, you inadvertently walked into a debate between Olaf and Ivand. As long as we need to. And I think we need to get out of here. I don't feel good about this place. Why? What's wrong? Rook says. Something doesn't feel right. The people here are staring at us like those vultures in the waste. I'm sorry, Ivan, Alette says. I think Odleif's wife is right. Blah. I saw a man. The whole time we were setting up, he was just watching me. In a creepy way. And how long before the dredge find us here? Juno will come, Ivan says. Just give it a little more time. Rook, listen to me. I need you to trust me on this one. <gasps> There's a market, you guys. Okay. I have a strong feeling that I should end the stream here. But I kind of also want to keep playing. So I'm going to step away real quick. Get some more water. And you guys let me know if you're still willing to hang in there. Otherwise, we'll end the stream here. Because remember, the save system in this game is really weird. So, like, if we continue, it's going to be a while before we can get to a spot that is going to be safe to just quit. Um, whereas this seems like a good stopping point. I'll be right back. Okay, Tang says I'm good for a while, but it's up to you. Let's talk to Ivan. 
At least. You're really worried about her, aren't you? What? Oh, Juno. Worried doesn't begin to describe it. If she doesn't find us here, or something has happened to her... Are you sure what you saw was real? It could have been a dream, or... I don't know. You were pretty exhausted. I don't know. To be honest, I'm not sure anymore. Everything is a blur. Uh, don't tell the others I said that. I have to hope it wasn't just a dream. How can we be sure she didn't leave already? Yeah. Okay, so what is it like to be a mender? Being a mender, I, I guess I never really thought about it like that. It's just part of me. They knew very young I would join the order. Born into it, you could say. My mother and father, both menders. The guild is for lots of people now. Builders and healers. They all pull lightning out of the sky? No, that that's not normal. It's one of the reasons... Be I, I know Juno. She's one of the council. She helps me control things like this. So we don't end up scaring people. How does weaving work anyway? Well, the hardest part is usually seeing the threads. Everything is part of the tapestry. It's made of threads woven together. If you can see the threads, you can manipulate them. I don't know how to explain it, really. It's like play trying to play a harp with invisible strings. Look at my staff, for example. <clears throat> Some menders carve intricate patterns in the wood to help them remember the shapes of... Ugh. Like I said, hard to explain. Why is Bellower still following us? I saw Grofheim as it burned. Ivan gets a faraway look in his eyes. The Sunder blew past it like a tempest. The Varl fell in the thousands. Most of the Sunder left the city and headed south. Who knows where they are now? They might be destroying every town they come to, or heading toward Abrang. Bellower stayed in Grofheim, just for the sport of it, I think. As we fled to Einartoft, I thought he must want to wipe the Varl off the map completely. But then he came after us. Maybe he knew Ivar was the one who killed Raze. Maybe, but I... Let's just make sure he doesn't catch up. Do you think this is the end times? I, I don't know what to think. I wish I could give you a better answer. Even if we escape the dredge, that serpent said a darkness was covering the world. I don't know how long that will take. Or what it means, even. I'm just trying to solve one problem at a time. The menders are in Arborang. Arborang. Arborang? I pronounce it differently every single time. If, the sh if we can find ships and make it to the capital, we might have a chance. I won't take any more time. No, it's okay, Rook. I appreciate the talk. It's good to stay grounded. I spend all day worrying about serpents or sundur. I think a lot of people are intimidated or scared, maybe, of me. Don't worry. It's nothing new. I'm used to it. Maybe sometime we can talk about things that don't include the world ending. Okay. Um... trying to think. I just looked at what time it is. It's 11.46 and I've got work in the morning. Uh, I think we're going to end it here just because I've got work and with daylight savings time the last thing I want to do is push my luck. I'm going to buy some supplies though. Okay, guys. Well, thanks for joining. I appreciate it. We'll pick this up again next week, and uh, we'll see if Juno ever shows up, I guess.